and we are just about to be joined by the trainer of the year, Mr. Derek James, here in Las Vegas. Derek, thanks very much for joining us here at Boxing News. And I'm very well, thanks. How are you? I'm doing good, thank you. It was a very spicy press conference today. I, I wasn't particularly expecting that. Were you? You know what? I think that when you're around people and you know how they feel about you, you have to rise your feelings to the same level that they feel about you. Because if not, you're going to get caught blindsided. You see, sorry, Derek. I was, I was going to say, it seemed to me like out of everybody up there, the coolest person in the house was, was your charge, Errol Spence Jr. Is that just who he is and what he's like? Just got an unruffleable character? You know, it's like this. You always got to watch out for the quietest guy in the room. He's the one thinking about stuff, focus on stuff, and making stuff happen. And so I was seeing on Saturday night what, what he was really thinking about. There was a, you could notice these, noticeably see the size difference right. today. Right. Is that a big factor for you, or, or are you just panking on just the ability alone of, of Errol? I mean, being bigger is just what it is. I mean, in fighting Mikey, we wanted to show that we could box, right? Because they say you better box, you better this, better that. But with Crawford, it's all about, you know, um, just doing our best to be better. And not so much about the size. The size will come into play eventually. But um, initially, it may not. But I think down the line, it might, it could. I don't know. We're not banking on that. Yeah. For, for, for me, again, from the outside looking in, the jab of Errol is the key because it's so hard. Right. That, like Terence likes to catch a jab, and I'm not sure if he'll be able to do that against Errol. Well, the physical, the, I mean, the weight of that jab. If he steps behind right, it, right, that, right, right, right. I mean, he has a very hard jab, and there's several ways to throw a jab. So he's throwing that that, that hard one. It's just as hard as the straight left punch is straight right. He's, he's keeping it long, like Errol always fights long, and that's what right. that's so that's so neat about him. He punches inside his body right. frame, right, which right. is fantastic. But he's keeping it long, important against against Terence because he throws the hooks right. over the right, top. Right, right, right. You, you just have to you have to do everything you can to take away what Terence Crawford does, and so that's the reality. Of, and if, if that's the case, and you do that, if that's the, you, wherever you move, it has to be a move that takes away something that he's great at. A lot of the talk coming into this fight, Derek, has been about the activity or the inactivity of Errol. What do you make of that? I mean, he's gone on record and said that he feels revitalized and he feels like he's given his, time, his body time to heal. From your perspective as a trainer, is that a factor? Will it not be a factor come fight night? How do you feel about that? I, mean, I think that, I mean, I'm not going to say he's been inactive. I mean, just you know, from not fighting since last year, whatever it was, you know what I mean? But I think at the same time, I think that, I mean, you know, he's fought the better opposition. Without a doubt, fighting at a high level of competition, it, it, it's a totally different situation than fighting, you know, keeping the belt instead of taking belts. Just on um, Errol Spence, he's, he's kind of said this week that he potentially sees this being his last fight at 147 pounds. You're now into those days where, you know, you're, you're very much in the weight cutting uh, part of fight week. How has he been at the weight this this time around? He's been good, man. He's like, he has a great dietitian that works with him. Elliot is doing a great job and he's keeping him on point. He's keeping him on cue. So, Anthony Joshua, a couple of weeks' time. Uh, we're expecting the big man to be here at some point on Saturday. How has he adapted? You're now in your second camp with him. Uh, a big fight on August the 12th in London. How's he getting on? He's doing great, man. He's, uh, he's really a great, true, true, true consummate businessman. He's really on his deal. Right? He doesn't go out, he doesn't do this, he doesn't do that. His whole day is spent therapy, therapy himself. Whatever it is, just keep everything fresh. Keep everything fresh. I've never really seen anybody like that before. He's really like, he's never done anything outside of what he has to be doing. And that's really great to see. Is it? I think physically, Joshua, you know, does everything really well. Right. The you know, technique is good. Is it all mental with him now? You know, he boxed well against, against Franklin, and he did, but just that a belief that he can be a bit more positive or well really what well, franklin he fought the fight that i wanted him to fight okay i didn't care about a knockout everything i did was about not not caring about a knockout just getting more time with them yeah sure creating a strategy that would have him winning every round but at the same time 
keeping him in a space where he won't be able to be touched. So and, he did what I wanted him to do. And important to, to trust you in the fight scenario. So he's listening to what you're saying instruction wise. Oh, yeah. With that, yeah. That, he's listening. We have conversations all the time about boxing, conversations all the time about, you know, he understands what I want him yeah. to do. That's really what it's all about. So he's been watching uh, some old film. He's been saying that you've been a very much a student. Uh, he's been a student to you being a teacher. What have you been getting him to watch? Which fighters and why? Really, we just accidentally, we had dinner together the other night, and we accidentally saw Larry Holmes, which he had never seen Larry Holmes. <laughs> no. And he was like, just like, like, watched me like, hey, man, look at it. He couldn't understand. Like, he's like, why did they not talk about Larry Holmes more? Yeah. And so that's really what's funny. If they don't talk about that anymore. Yeah, it's like um, it's a great fighter. We mentioned there about Anthony Joshua. It seems like your, your gym's getting busier and busier every other month, uh, busy, Coach. Busy, busy, You've busy. got Ryan Garcia in there. No, it's got Frank Martin, of course, right. who boxed a couple of weeks ago. Right. Jamal Charlo at the right. end of September has the small task of jumping up to 168 against Canelo right. Alvarez. Right. A busy time for you in the gym. Man, it's really busy, but at the same time, it's uh, it's like life come in full circle, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you're able to do things you never could imagine doing, being an individual you never could imagine being, and helping young men fulfill their own personal goals is my key, to help them get to where they want to be and who they want to become. How talented is Brian Garcia? We all saw him against Javante Davis. I think the general feeling was that may have come a little bit too soon for him. We can all see kind of the raw ability that he has, the natural athleticism that he has. How much has he still got to work on to become the fighter that you want him to be? I mean, listen, everybody has work. I have work. I mean, I'm constantly working on my, myself. But Ryan's a great fighter. And it's all a process. Everything's a process. I mean, with AJ, with Errol, with Frank, I mean, Jamel. It's all a process. So that's the key element that we stay within, knowing that we're on the process, knowing that we're on the road, knowing that we're working to get to a particular point. That's what it's all about. Okay, well, Coach, we appreciate your time. So before we let you go, we've got two questions. The first one, how does it end on Saturday night? All the marbles at Welterweight, Errol Spence Jr. versus Terence Crawford. Errol Spence being undisputed Welterweight champ of the world. And the last question, you and Bomac on the undercard? <laughs> two different weight divisions. <laughs> <laughs> Just a bit. Because <laughs> really four of them. You know, it's like him and three other guys. But no, nah, it's like, nah, man. He's not my, he's, listen, he is not my competition. I'm not competing against him. I'm competing against me. Yeah. I'm competing over Derek James yesterday. What can I do today to help Errol get better? I'm not worried about him. If I'm focused on him, then I can't focus on my guy. And all I care about is my guy. And there you have it. Coach Derek James, trainer of the year. I think if it's fair to say, if you win Saturday night and you get a nice big win at the end of September, you might well get it this year. You're talking to me, right? And no such thing as ifs <laughs> in my life. It's like you came if you missed the fight. If you know, you're here. Where you started to get to this point is a long road. And you can't if you wait through that to get here. So neither can I. So my, it's a definite for me. I can I consider myself told. Here we go. Thanks very much, Derek. Thanks for your time. All the best on Saturday night. Thank you.